Let's continue exploring Shader Toy and continue to work on the corridor tunnel shader created by Nusan. Thanks again to Nusan for letting us use this shader as an example in our videos. If we go back and look at the code, we can see a variable called steps declared on the first line. This variable determines the render quality. By setting this variable to 1 instead of 30 and recompiling the shader, image rendering requires fewer resources, but the quality is obviously affected because fewer rays accumulate over time. When we set this variable to 100, we can see that the number of frames per second drops from 300 to 200, but the render quality is significantly higher than before. In order to define the value of this variable without modifying the code, it's possible to extract it and turn it into a parameter just like any other autograph parameter. This additional parameter is called uniform. By clicking on the plus button, we can add a float type uniform, since this is the type of the initial variable. We'll call this uniform steps as it was declared in the original code and assign it a value. The shader toy compiler indicates that this variable has been declared twice, which is true since it already existed in the original code. So we'll remove this variable from the code so that we only have it once, as an external uniform. We'll define limits for this parameter, like a range of 1 to 300 for the quality. Now we can influence the render quality without having to modify the original code. This is a great way to make this shader accessible, even to professionals without programming knowledge. We can also animate this parameter by going to the beginning of the animation and adding a first keyframe. Later, we can add a second keyframe with a value of 100 to animate this parameter over time. Keyframes added to this parameter can be manipulated in the same way as any other keyframe in Autograph. Let's remove this animation and set the value back to 150. Now let's focus on how we can adjust a shader's dynamic range. By using the viewer's color picker, we can look at the pixels and see that all channels are limited to one. The last lines of the shader's code aim to compress the dynamic range to prevent exceeding this value of one. By removing these lines and multiplying the output values by four, the color picker now shows that the red, green, and blue values go well above one. So we can use the shader toy generator and still maintain a wide dynamic range. Now that this image is generated on the fly by the shader toy generator, we can combine it with modifiers that already exist in Autograph, like the glow modifier. Since the shader's output values are extremely bright, while above 1, we'll adjust the glow modifier's gain parameter to reduce light intensity at output. We can also add a defocus modifier, which lets us simulate a loss of focus based on a gradient that we'll generate. This gradient is added to the defocus modifier's depth map parameter. Double clicking on this gradient lets us view it in solo mode in the viewer, which is a convenient way to adjust its parameters. Let's adjust a few parameters to change the gradient to radial mode. This way we can guide the defocus based on the brightest value, defining the sharp area in the center and gradually becoming more blurry towards the outer part of the gradient. Let's switch the viewer back to the composition and go back to the defocus parameters. By switching to depth value mode, the luminance value defined by this parameter will guide the blur's intensity. Assigning a value of one ensures that the focus will always be at the center of the image. So we were able to leverage the base shader created by Nusan and add additional modifiers without having to integrate them into the code. To share this shader along with its modifiers, we'll start by adding a control panel to the main composition. This control panel serves to expose the important parameters for easy access. We'll expand the shader toy parameters in the timeline to access the steps uniform we declared earlier. Let's select the composition to display its control panel and drag the steps parameter to make it accessible. We could also rename it quality. We'll expand the defocus modifier parameters to access the parameter that's called defocus. Once again, we'll simply drag it into the control panel to provide easy access. By going into these parameter options, we have the ability to set default values, as well as additional minimum and maximum limits. 
To finish off, let's package all of this information into a container using the export as package option. The shader's content will be encrypted, which allows the author to protect their code. Exporting this as a package will add a new generator to the list. Let's assign this package an identifier like com.leftangle.shadertoy.corridor. We'll use the name Corridor Travel, like Nusan, as the name for this new generator. Finally, we'll click on the export button, which will write a new AGT or autograph template file to the disk. The list of generators will refresh, revealing a new corridor travel generator. Let's close this project by going to File, Close Project, and create a new composition. Now we can add this shader just like any other generator autograph provides. By selecting it, we can access the two parameters that were previously exposed, steps and defocus. So the shader toy generator lets artists, programmers leverage their knowledge in shader coding as a significant value in productions. This functionality also lets users endlessly expand Autograph to accommodate the needs of any projects that teams work on.